Okay. Here it is. So I've just completed the first episode of Nisei Koi. And this is a long time in the running. I promised to do this for a certain somebody. You know, a play-by-play, -play or a view of the show. Uh, not episode by episode, but I think the first episode merits its own, and perhaps the final episode as well, sort of general recap. So this will just be my impression so far, what I think's gonna happen. Just kidding, I already know what's gonna happen, I already know the spoilers from the manga. So, this is the anime, in case it wasn't clear, that's why I said episode. You have to keep up. Okay, so, basic thing, basic plot, it's about a guy. Right, there's this pro our protagonist, um, Ichijo, uh, uh, Raku something or another, you know, and uh, he's the son of a Yakuza gang. Now, Yakuza and anime, at least the sort of anime I watch, are usually the, exactly how they're in this one. Right? They're sort of goofy, they're, they're like kind of grown up children, they're, like, they're big children pretty much, and you know, they're, they're quick to anger, but they have big hearts, and um, you know, they're good guys too, they're really playful. Which, you know, I don't know about the Yakuza in real life. I'm sure I'm sure they're romanticized to a degree. I'm sure they're violent thugs. But at the same time, you know, there is something heroic in its own way. But, you know, that's that's not really... I mean, in anime, it's pretty... It's usually very simple. They're just like... Um, they're, 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 they're the protectors of the, 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 the mean streets. You know, they keep the bad guys out. So... Um, Whatever, but th that's pretty much what it is. And uh, so he's the only son of the, the gang's leader. I don't know if it's ever named, but you know, just the gang. Let's call it the, bo the boys. He's the he's this only son and heir of the, the boys. But what happened is that he doesn't care about any of that stuff. He, he, he the, the show begins with him cooking, right? He's cooking up a, a big dinner, a big, well, big breakfast, so pardon me, for all the boys. Um, and they're like, wow, you're the best young master, we love you, man, you're the greatest. And then he very, you know, matter-of-factly in his, in a sort of exposition way, explains, oh no, I'm not interested in the Yakuza. No, 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 you see, I want to be a civil servant, right? I want to, I want to be a, a, you know, a bureaucrat for the rest of my life. That's my dream. So, he's a, he's a, he's a straight shooter, right? He has, he has big ambitions, big dreams. But whatever, so he, it's, I guess, to the show, you know, he's serious. He's not like these other goofballs, he's serious. So whatever, he goes to school, for whatever reason, and some girl, you know, does a bunch of flips, flies over the, the, the fence of the school, and just zooms in right into his nose, and just knocks him flat on his behind. And, you know, she says, whoops, my bad, and then runs away. You know, so he's hurt, and in this little kerfuffle, he drops a necklace because oh, I completely forgot the opening scene, which is like some very like it looks like a film, an old film reel. Uh, it's basically the premise is ten years ago, he the protagonist made a promise with some girl that when they meet again, they would marry each other and fall in love, and they they would. So he had this this sort of necklace that had a lock. And the other girl would have the key, right? And she would unlock his heart, you know, what was hidden away or whatever. I'm sure it's going to have deep symbolism in the future. I, I'm ecstatic to find out. But I already know. So by the, so I'm pretty sure, like, there's in the beginning, right? So in, in episode one, it sort of hints at who the person who had the, 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 the key is. Um, although, if, if I'm not mistaken, if we want to know about the anime, is that there are other girls that also potentially have it. It's like, it's sort of a mystery. It's like, whoa, which one's the real one? Um, I already know which one's the real one. Uh, I don't know if I really will spoil it here, but I already know. I already know. I knew from before I even began watching which girl's the real one and which girl wins, and whether or not the same girl. So, the anime doesn't get that far at all, by the way. If the anime doesn't reach that point, that's fine, whatever. Not interested. <laughs> but, okay. So he gets hit, and then he goes back to classroom. It's where we're introduced to two other characters, which are, which would be his friend, it seems, you know, who's like this sort of goofy guy. He's like, haha, whoa, what's it like today? You couldn't get much, you know, just he had like an upbeat sort of voice. So I imagine he's the, uh, you know, he's the comic relief friend, an already goofy show. Uh, and this other girl, oh, 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 Ona, Ona Dara, something like that. Uh, you know, she's like the cute, short, demure girl. 
Uh, she has kind of a weird haircut, I'll say. Her hair is a little weird. I, I don't know how I feel about it, but whatever. You know, it, it is what it is. So it's very clear that our protagonist is, is you know, really into this girl. And she's like, wow, I got to spend time with her. She was she was touching my face because she was putting a bandit on my bloody nose. Uh, well, I'm sure he was bruised and beaten on, on outside his nose as well, which I guess makes sense for the band-aid. But um, he helps her out. By that, I mean she puts a band-aid and they sit down and class begins and the teacher says, well, I'd like to introduce a new student. And what will you know? It's the girl from earlier. Now, by the, there's this little background. This is where I stopped watching when I first tried to watch Nisei Koi some years ago. I'd watched the first episode, got yeah, three, four minutes in, got to the part where like she walked in the classroom, I just turned it off, and I was like, you know, that's enough of this. So I thought maybe, maybe some other day. I had no intention of watching it. I didn't really care. Even now, I don't care. I'm only doing it. Well, okay, I'll say this right. So this anime, I, I, I it's just it, it, what it's it's a rom com, you know, hair. Right, that that that's all it is, and you know that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, I suppose. But well, I guess there's a lot of wrong with it. <laughs> but like, and I'm sure this this one will have like the sort of common pitfalls we see. In fact, we get it right away, which is at the end of the episode, it's revealed. Okay, I'll get to that in a second. First. The, the girl, he, he realizes he's missing his necklace because he lost it, and then he, he tells her, like, look, you, the, the, the blonde girl, Ch uh, Ch Chitoge, I think her name is. You know, she's blonde. Not the thing, right? In anime, right? Uh, not always. Sometimes you'll have characters with different color hair just, just because. It doesn't mean anything. In this case, right, she's a, she's, she's a Hapa, right? She's an American. Or she's half American or whatever. Which, you know, now... You know, I you know I I, I, I failed school. I, I didn't finish that, but I, I I know about you know recessive genes and things like that, and blonde hair, blue eyes. I'm pretty sure, you know, a little recessive, right? Not something that you'd get from a you know black eyes, black hair Japanese person. But uh, whatever. So her father is an American, uh, I suppose. And, of course, their daughter is blonde hair, blue eyes, as you'd expect. Um, although, another interesting thing is, because sometimes you, you will have Hap as an anime. Although, most, this is an exception, but most of the time, it's it's uh, a Japanese father and American or European mother. Right, well, I mean, there's not really much of a difference, really, because most of the times, Americans in anime are just blonde hair, blue eyes. Which, you know, <laughs> big if true, but uh, it's not true. But, so, there you go. That, that's, I guess, their conception of it. But, she's, uh... So, whatever. So, uh... Basically, the blonde one, Chitoge, helps him look for the, the necklace. She's... The, he acts violent. Another thing where, like, they're, they're very hostile, and they're constantly getting arguing with each other and getting angry. And, of course, of course, the other characters ask, Whoa, you guys seem real close. Like, Wow. You know, another another thing you just get you gotta get you gotta get used to these sorts of things. Like I look, there are a lot of things I hate in, in anime. Like um, whenever a, char a character makes food, another character eats it, and they you know oishi, right? Like this over dramatic, like whoa, this is the you know this is the greatest rice ball I've ever eaten in my life. This is the greatest you know <laughs> bacon and eggs I've ever eaten in my entire life. This changed everything. Um, you know, it's it's annoying, but you just gotta it's gotta gotta just truck on through. I'm running out of time here, so let me just speed this up. Uh, she agrees to help him because he's you know she feels kind of guilty for doing it, but not really because she acts you know real whiny the entire time. And they eventually she says, "Well, I'm sure the girl who gave you that necklace, you know, doesn't even remember you." Uh, I bet you it's all for nothing. Gets angry and tells her to go away. He's like, you know what? I've had enough of your sass. And then she says, fine. Uh, and then eventually you find out, oh, she actually didn't stop looking. She just felt embarrassed. So she went to look for it on her own. She found it. She tossed it at him. And uh, he was... He's like, well, I guess she's not that bad after all. <laughs> and so then he talks to the old Nera girl. Because she's the one who told him, like, oh, she stayed looking for it the entire time. Though, you could probably guess that anyways. Like, he, he asked the really stupid question. 
when, when like, he found out that she gave it to him. He's like, whoa. How did she have What was she doing with it? It's like, well, let's think about this, <laughs> you know? Did she have it the whole time? Was it all for a sort of joke where she could just throw it at your face? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Or she could have been looking for it the entire time. I don't know, but we didn't give enough time to process it, I get. So, I guess. So Odenera tells him, and then she says, well, then he says, maybe... You know, maybe she had a point, though. Maybe this promise thing is something I have to put behind me. Maybe I can't keep it going. And then she says, whoa, you can't do that. You've made a promise. You gotta stick with it. Yada, yada, yada. Don't care, don't care. Uh, and by the way, I like I, I like Odin Air. I like her sort of archetype. That Like, I, I have no problem with her, necessarily. But she says that. He says, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> you know, he's, he's easily swayed by cute girls. Um, And then he leaves. And then she pulls out a key. And she says, again, I couldn't tell him. Ha. <sighs> which, you know, <laughs> which is, I mean, that, the right, that right there. That right there is just the problem. The, the classic misunderstanding and miscommunication and keeping secrets because whatever. It's just a very, that's very common during you know, Endemic to this type of anime, out of which I watch, you know, a decent amount of. And so, it's unfortunate, these sorts of things. It's infuriating when you really think about it. It's like, wow, we can skip. I don't have to watch the next... Uh, what's 19 plus 12? 37? Something like that. I have to watch the next 37 episodes. That was a joke. I know it's not 37. Whatever. I don't have to watch the next... Uh, let me actually do the math here. 20 plus 10 is 30. 32. 32 episodes. There we go. Well... Well, actually, no, 31, so I already watched one episode. See? I, I could, so I figured that out. I, I can just skip the rest. I don't have to watch any else if we just figure out, like, oh, actually, you know, I'm in love with you, haha, or so it seems. But yeah, so Daenerys is the girl with the key, allegedly. She she comes, she says, so apparently she's the one who gave him the promise, but he doesn't know it. Although she, she figured out just, you know, recently, when he found out that he had the necklace, I guess she never knew before. And she does nothing about it. Because no reason. So we can keep the plot going, as I just said. So, and that's how the episode ends. No, wait, I forgot the last thing, where he goes back home. And like in the background of the episode, like, his, his Yakuza gang, the boys, were fighting, right, with these other, like, you know, hooligans. And, uh, you know, they said, man, it's getting, the, t the fighting's getting real tough. It's, it's, it's all out war, pretty much, or something like that. And then his father says, all right, we need to make peace, right? We want this war to end. So I'm gonna, you're gonna start dating the daughter of the enemy gang's leader. You know, it's like, well, you know, I get the the, the boys are romantic. You know, they're, they're suckers for love stories. And he says, I don't want to do that. His father tells him, you don't have a choice. And he says, all right. And then, oh, wow, imagine my shock. Guess who it is? It's Chitoge. And, of course, they're very, whoa, upset by this, but I don't care. So, whatever. I'm sure, like, the next episode's gonna begin with them, like, you know, agreeing like they've been arguing this entire time but i'm sure they're gonna start agreeing like no there's no way i can you know date this idiot and then whatever i, I don't care apparently like you know the two gang leaders are, are old friends or whatever but you know they don't have enough influence in that regards like so the all like the games will stop fighting they'll be swayed by like these teenagers and their you know love but they won't be convinced by like the friends or like, they, or do they not want to explicitly end it because it will, like, they'll lose face or they won't look as cool? I, I don't know. Maybe that'll all be explained. But um, you know, that's it. Actually, in this last little minute or so or whatever, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the things I did like, which you know would be, um, you know, Shaft. I like I like the art style. A lot of cases, the weird sort of visuals. It's kind of wonky. It's kind of surreal at times. I the, the opening scenes, not the opening scene with the him getting the the locket, but like, where he's cooking the breakfast. I thought that was pretty good. And, like, the weird... Like, there are some, like, little visual things. You know, it's... The show's funny. There are some funny things, you know. Usually when he gets hit. I have, you know, I have no problem with slapstick, I guess. So, there you go. I think I'm wrapping it up here. So, Nisekoi could be worse. It's not as bad as the first episode of, you know, Toradora. Where I, I just... They're just... I was so bewildered by the weird things that are happening. But, could be worse. Uh, so you know, we'll see. Maybe it actually, maybe I'll actually end up liking this show. Uh, it may not be likely, but we'll see. So you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll like do recap every five episodes or something. Uh, we'll find out. You know, Nisei Koi, False Love, title drop.